Hi, everybody, and welcome to Why Are You an Entrepreneur? The Trials and Triumphs. I'm Maureen Edwards with Eight Simple Steps, and you know the drill. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time or watching the replay, this is where I bring you rock star entrepreneurs every single week to share their journey, give you some words of wisdom, some best practices out there, and really to inspire you because you are all rock stars if you are business owners out there trying to make it happen. So tonight is no exception as usual, right? So I have Dawn Marie Perkins. She is the founder of Spotlight Print and Promo Solutions. So welcome, Dawn Marie. Thank you, Maureen. I'm happy to be here. I'm really happy to have you here. Uh, so, you know, when I reached out to you, I was going through a bunch of entrepreneurs out there and I noticed your business has been around for six years. And that was intriguing to me, working with so many entrepreneurs and knowing that 20% of people who start a business in their first year will fail and up to like 50% by the five year mark. So when I see that somebody makes it past that point, I am like, you've got to be doing something right. So that's why I wanted to hear what's going right. But before I jump into that, what made you become a business owner? Tell me a little bit about your journey. Um, well, I actually um, was at home for a very long time. Um, after having my first set of twins, I decided to stay home. I already had um, my first child who was in school, but I wanted to stay home with the twins because obviously daycare is expensive. Right. So we decided... And, having twins made it just doubly expensive. So I stayed home with them. And then about three years later, I found myself uh, pregnant again with a oh. set of twins. <laughs> no way. Yeah. And Do twins run in the family, obviously. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> oh my so, gosh. Um, and then the second set of twins, there were some complications with one of my sons. Um, so any ideas of going back to work at that point, um, went out the window because my focus needed to be elsewhere. Um, so I was out of the workforce for a very long time, um, dabbled in some direct um, direct selling, um, doing some things on my own um, crafts and whatnot. And uh, so the journeys, you know, progressed over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2000, 16, my husband had actually been in the promotional products industry for a couple of years. Um, he decided to get a full-time job. The company that he was doing independent work through um, did some reorganization. Um, so we had a discussion and we decided that, you know, we wanted to continue. We enjoyed doing what we were doing. We enjoyed our clients. So we decided that we would start our own business and with me as the primary owner and as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> All right. So tell me how that like worked. All of a sudden, you're kind of thrown into not even easing into maybe another corporate job or, you know, on somebody else's paycheck. Right. But now you're an entrepreneur, like you own a business. What were some of the hardest things when you started? Um, actually, the transition wasn't all that hard for us because we had actually affiliated with a company called I Promote You. Um, okay. So they handle a lot of our back office stuff and we already had um, the clients in place because we were able to keep the clients that we had acquired, my husband had acquired during his time. Um, so we already had a client base when we started. Um, so the, the transition wasn't as hard as if we had been starting from scratch. Right, right. So it was kind of that that midway. So for you, what is uh, specifically your role in owning the company? Uh, chief cook and bottle washer. Okay, exactly. I, I do it all. <laughs> it's, it's multiple hats that we, we all wear. Yeah. Um, so as an entrepreneur, what has been the greatest success of owning your business? Um, just the flexibility of being able to balance work with um, real life, <laughs> family life, yeah, health, health issues. Um, you know, we have a great flexibility and, and that's important for us, so. 
I hear that a lot, I, especially women who, you know, have been moms or want to be moms and they're like, how do I do this and still keep myself in the workforce, you know, having my own thing. And I hear this all the time that moms, when they make great entrepreneurs, I'm telling you, I've seen them. Um, but I think that's a real driving force for a lot of people. I've got to stay home with my kids. It's, you know, it, they're first. And then having a business gives you that flexibility. Um, so what have you found in your business to be the most challenging that you've had to overcome? I think just um, dealing with prospects who are looking just for the bottom dollar price. Um, and not understanding the value that we bring to the table and how we can help them. Um, so we have to make the realization that, you know, then they're not the client for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's important where you say, you know what, we're not going to sell on price. That's not what we're here for. We're so much bigger than that, so much better than that. So, you know, when COVID hit, you know, I, tell me how that impacted your business, because I'm sure you do a lot of work for conferences and and things like that. Yeah. How did you overcome the challenge of COVID? Um, well, I mean, it, it, you're exactly right about, um, you know, that it was challenging because our industry is very event focused. Um, in fact, when everything got shut down, it was right before we were about to receive final approval on um, an annual event um, for 800 people. And oh, wow. so that was a big so hit for us. And then, you know, because it progressed, we had another major event that wound up not happening. So we, we took a big hit that year. Um, but we stayed in touch with our clients because we felt that at that point it was important that we just stay in touch, you know, show them that we care about them. It wasn't so much about, you know, contacting them and saying, you know, is there anything that you need from us for, you know, for product or services or anything like that? It wasn't about that. It was about, you know, the relationship with the clients. And I think that helped us um, survive because as things started to come back, you know, they started calling again and we were able to find, you know, other ways to adapt. Um, you know, people were trying to find hand sanitizer and masks and whatnot. So yeah. we kind of pivoted a little and, you know, we looked at that sort of stuff. We made available that we could do if they wanted to do virtual events, we could provide them with things and send them to attendees who were going to attend a virtual event. So you know, those sorts of things helped us um, bounce back. You know what I love about what you said is that you nurtured the customers who were your clients, who were right there in front of you. And it was authentic and pure and caring about them. Not just let me sell you a product so that I can bring some income in because they probably didn't need really anything at that moment and they were trying to figure it out. But do you know there, the statistics have come out that when people do did exactly what you did and just focused on their clientele and the clientele's well-being, they actually survived the pandemic more than the people who were feverishly running around for another prospect and trying to get out there and trying to push people. People who just hunkered down and really focused on who already know, like, trust, and are loyal to you, they're the ones who survived. So mm -hmm. what you said here was super important for people to nurture the ones who love you instead of running around sometimes, spending mm -hmm. more time prospecting. Um, and I also like how you pivoted. I mean, all those virtual events. So tell me, how, how did you use your products? Because it's print, it's promo, um, you know, it's, it's branded products. If somebody's at a virtual conference, what would they need from you for that? Um, pretty much the same types of, um, product, you know, we could send them notebooks and pens and, um, you know, we could do custom packaging, um, and send it in a package. 
Um, it would work for employees who are now working from home for those companies that could work from home, you know, just as a morale boost um, from working from home, you know, and get them things that they could put on their home in their home office um, or use, you know, in their kitchen or something like that. Um, but it was also using that custom packaging that was that was a big plus because, you know, somebody's getting a gift in the mail, they get excited. Oh, they so. do. Yeah. Um, so I did a whole gifting uh, promo for a company I was brought in uh, to do a turnaround strategy. And all of our conferences got canceled, but we were a hand sanitizer company and a bleach wipe company. So mm -hmm. who knew that those products were going to be in such mm -hmm. demand? And I remember when all the conferences got canceled, we put together those care packages of the, you know, the registrants with cookies, with the hand sanitizer, with the bleach wipes, exactly like what you're talking about. And it wasn't here, we're going to sell you all our products, right? We care enough about you that we're thinking about you. And you're right. right. They love getting stuff in the mail. People don't realize that direct mail is huge right? and people don't use it. You know, and we even did some, um, self promos where we donated pro product to um, our local fire department and police department because they were collecting hand sanitizer for, you know, the officers and the firefighters to have on hand for themselves. Um, so we donated a lot of product towards that as well, you know, right. to give back to the community. Right. So tell me where you focus on reaching your ideal client is there a certain social media platform that works really well for you or are there other marketing campaigns that you use that work really well um we use some direct um, mail marketing mm -hmm. uh, it's dimensional so it'll be um packaging there'll be a print component in there and some sort of product to go with it with, okay you know creative content um call to action um to kind of get our the word out there and then we can use that as our our foot in the door so to speak as opposed to um your typical cold calling because nobody likes you know a lot of people don't like the cold calling or you know no solicitation signs this is a way in the door it's something different it's gonna stand out from any other piece of mail because there's some bulk to it and um, it gives us a way to follow up a few days later and make the connection and set up a meeting and talk with them and see, learn more about their company. Oh my gosh, I am so loving this. So for people out there who have products, uh, you know, or, or demonstrating, you know, what you can produce, what a great idea to reach out to the businesses that you've identified are definitely people who are ideal for us that we could really provide a solution for and send a really cool direct mail care package. I will tell you direct mail is not used very often, but when you use it right, you're, you're right. You are going to stand out from the competition who's calling them on the phone. Right. Right. Who's right. sending them an email. I mean, and they get to try the goods, right? They actually get to right. see what you do without maybe even taking a risk. Right? right. This is so that's awesome. Have you had good results with it? We have. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you do it just for local or do you send these out nationally? Um, most of it is fairly local. Um, okay. but we do work with clients across, across the country. So, um, we've just not necessarily sent them out outside of, um, the new England area. Right. Right. So what do you think is the hardest thing that happens with entrepreneurs who, who start businesses today? So many of them don't survive and you've been around for six years. I think um, part of it comes down to mindset, um, believing in yourself and um, just sticking with it. And if something isn't working, it's not necessarily a failure. It's just a way to find another way to do something. So, um, and always to keep learning um, and being open um, to learning because we, we never will know it all. <laughs> 
No, we won't. And I love the fact that I think you are definitely the type of person who is always trying to learn. I was looking at all the certifications that you have made an effort to go about and learn more and become certified. So I'm just curious, what was the the impetus to that? Because you didn't just get one or two, like you, you have <laughs> quite a bit on there to demonstrate your expertise and that you're you're highly skilled in this. Uh, are there more certificates on the horizon? Um, yes. <laughs> okay, you wanna share? Um, well, I'm taking some courses on graphic design. Okay. Um, because our industry, we, you know, bring in a lot of artwork for the branding. So I want to learn more about that. Um, I actually do want to pursue um, an official women-owned business certification. Right. Um, so that'll be a big one. That'll 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 take a while, but um, that's a big one. Um, so what what is something? I mean, this is also business related, but I'd like to know a little bit about you is there something you do outside of work that helps with mindset you know for people out there who maybe are struggling is there something you do that helps you with it um i like to go for walks and nature photography and spending time with my children and grandchildren how many grandchildren do you now have um three Awesome. Awesome. So four kids, three five grandkids. Kids. You've got five. I thought maybe you said I had one already and then I had twins. And then I'm thinking yes. you've got five, five and owning your own business. So where do you see your business in the next year to two? Like what are your scaling ideas? Um, I would like to at some point, um, I kind of go back and forth with wanting to get a brick and mortar location um, okay. and looking at the pros and cons of that as opposed to we work out of our home. Um, and there were a lot of benefits for that, especially during COVID, so that when everybody had to shut down, we didn't necessarily have to. <laughs> Right, we were already, exactly. We were already home. And right. we didn't have to worry about a lease payment. Um, yeah. And a second set of utilities and stuff. So I think that was really helpful for us. Um, I think at some point, too, um, it would be to bring on some sales staff to assist. How many employees do you have now? Just me. Oh my goodness. So you're juggling all of it. Do you have anybody to help you with what's what's going on behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, all the scenes? <laughs> I mean, I promote you, I promote you as a big help. Um, they are our back office. So they handle um all of the financing for orders, um, which is helpful. And they do a lot of the um you know, the billing and accounts receivable. Um, they offer services um, for social media content and graphic, they offer graphic design services, um, you know, the vendor relationships and stuff. Um, we have a vendor relations department um, that kind of helps us with that as well. Um, so that takes a lot off of oh, our yeah. plate so that we yeah. can focus on our clients. And that's what your main thing is, your client facing, you're talking with them, you're you know, trying to solve problems for them because it's more than just printing branded products, right? Can you right. tell me specifically you know, what, what your company does for people out there besides just printing branding products? I think it's much more in depth than that. Right, um, well, I mean, we can help with safety programs, um, employee recognition, um, you know, all the things that companies, you know, find important, you know, recruitment. Um, so we can help with, you know, put together programs for all that sort of stuff. We can help them if they want, if they have their own 
product that they mm -hmm. want to sell or they want their employees to purchase certain things to kind of control their brand. We can help them set up a company store. Um, we can help, you know, organizations do fundraising. So there's a myriad of things, signage and whatnot too. So. So is there a quote that you really love that inspires you? Did I, this was my hard question, that was, right? That was putting me on the spot. <laughs> Everybody out there, I did not prepare her for this question. Um, I guess have no fear of perfection because you'll never reach it. Ooh. I always say perfection is the enemy of done, right? We don't get anything done. So it's exactly, exactly like what you're saying. Can you say it again? Have no fear of perfection because you will never reach it. Awesome. Everybody out there, did you hear that? I'd like for you to tell everybody out there just your final words of wisdom as an entrepreneur for those out there who maybe are struggling a little bit with it having to overcome some obstacles, what what would you say to them? Um, well, don't give up, search out help, and um, never stop learning. Awesome. All right, so where can people get a hold of you if they need print products, marketing solutions, promotion? Tell me where they can get a hold of you. Um, well, they can find uh, contact us through our website at uh, spotlightprintandpromosolutions.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Oh my gosh, you're across the board. <laughs> All right. And we have a YouTube channel, which is in its infancy stage. Okay, but this is going to be the first video that's going on it. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting this on your YouTube channel. Absolutely. So I have one question that I do ask, um, two of them. One was, why are you doing what you're doing? But the second is, there are a lot of people who do what you do. Can you tell me what makes you different and why people should choose you? Because of me. <laughs> Um, because of you, <laughs> um, well, we strive to go the extra mile. Um, we want to bring solutions to the table. Um, it's not just about, um, selling you a product, um, that doesn't have quality. We want to make sure that it's a safe product, that it's a quality product. Um, so I think that education kind of plays into it. Um, because we do have product safety aware designation. Um, so we, I go through um, quite a bit of education about different product and social responsibility um, topics um, to make sure that, you know, if you're buying something that, you know, it's not going to explode in your office or it's not going to be something that's going to be harmful to children. Um, if that's the market that is your end user. So um, I think that that's what makes us different. We're not always going to be the cheapest, um, but we always will be honest and um, try to bring you the best solutions. So none of those cheapy pens that explode at the conferences no. that I've no. seen a million of? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's much more high end out there, everybody. That run out of ink before you leave the conference? Yeah. Oh, we've all had them. We've all given them out, all the little tchotchkes. It, you know, branded products are so much more than that. And, and I absolutely adore your idea about doing that direct mail, sending those care packages out to people as a way of prospecting and introducing yourself and showing them the product. And what a great like opener to the whole, the whole thing. So for everybody out there, if you want to reach out to Dawn Marie, please do so. Um, I think that what she has really shared tonight is 
I don't know, just really important. So many good pieces out there from really nurturing your existing customers to prospecting people a little bit more creatively and a little bit more personally. So Dawn, I'm hoping that you're gonna come back again and share maybe another six years, right? Going strong. Um, so let me know, um, let me know some of the scaling uh, things that are happening for you. Did you hire a Salesforce? We want to know about it. No. Uh, have you opened that brick and mortar? That's another whole conversation. So we hope that you will come back. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. For, uh, for those of you who are out there, please let me know if there's anything I can do for you. If you are having a difficult time converting, remember, it's not your marketing. It's your messaging. Let's chat and let's get your messaging, your target audience, and where you should be talking to them nailed down. All right, everybody, I will see you next Thursday. Another rock star is coming your way. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And for those of you who are watching the replay for the first time, welcome. Take care, everybody.